for you to see Pat win the award? Uh, just, um, you know, I was super proud for Pat. Uh, he's invested a lot of, of effort, energy, blood, sweat into his, his growth and development here over the last couple of years. Um, and, and one of the things I was, I've been as proud about for him as anything is just not just his physical growth and maturity, but his emotional growth and maturity. Um, you know, he, he's always been a guy that, that cares a lot. And, you know, as a young guy, that manifests in different ways. And this year that was able to manifest it with just great passion on the field, um, a great work ethic. And, you know, you like to see guys who work hard to see their hard work get rewarded. And, um, you know, I'm really proud for him. Um, I think it speaks to what we're trying to build here. Um, you know, I think it, uh, whatever the narrative sometimes can be in terms of, um, you know, the, the transfer guys coming in and having great success. Well, now here's a, here's a high school kid that was, was recruited here, developed here, and he's having success. So it's working on both ends of the, the spectrum, and, and that, that part is also gratifying. You know how to ACC Player of the Year and then follow that up with ACC Freshman Defensive of the Year. How big a raise are you asking for <laughs> as the defensive end coach? Corey's your agent. Yeah, yeah I, but let's, let's get as much as we can, man. You know, I, I, I'll be honest with you on that stuff. Um, I don't. I feel like whatever role that I played within their development, I'm proud of. But those kids put in a ton of work. And, uh, um, you know, it's always about that, about them and the work that they put in. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm honored to be a part of it, and I hope that I played a role in it. But those kids, those kids did a phenomenal job, and I appreciate their work. Uh, their investment, their toughness, and how they've just stuck with what we're trying to build here and have done everything the right way. How much does it help, though, with, with what Patrick did and then what Jermaine and Jared have done these last two years on the recruiting trail and in the portal season to have this kind of proof of what you guys can do for defensive ends? Oh, from a recruiting standpoint, it's, it's huge because, um, you know, to me, if you're a defensive end and um, the way the system is built and, and the, what we've been able to do here, whether you're a transfer that wants to come here or you're a high school player that's trying to figure out if he wants to come here, um, you know, the, the, the proof is in, in the results. And a lot of people on the recruiting trail kind of tell you things of how it could be. Um, we have the opportunity to tell people how it is. And, uh, you know, whether, whether you're talking about um, Jermaine or Kier or uh, Jared Verse or, um, you know, in this case, Pat Payton, and even go on, like at other positions, like, uh, you know, I feel like this program's strength is our player development and, and it's showing up. How about, um, how do you handle your conversations with Jared and guys like that when they're deciding what they're going to do? Um, always put, come from the perspective of what's in the best interest for the player. Um, you know, I've had, I've been fortunate in my career to have a, a bunch of guys that were in this position, that they had an opportunity to stay or, or go. Um, and what I've always told them is that if you feel like you've reached your ceiling and from a, from a play perspective and then also from the financial perspective that the league can provide, if you feel like you're, you're kind of capped out, then it's where you need to, to go. If you feel like you are, would be undervalued with where you would have to go in the draft right now and you feel like there's more, more room to grow, um, then, then you need to come back. Um, but I want them to do what's best for them. And, uh, you know, I know uh, Jared's going through that process now. And, um, you know, what he and I have spoke on, you know, together I'll keep between us. But I, I respect his process. I know his parents very well. Um, they're very thorough in terms of how they went through the recruiting process. And if they're anywhere as, as thorough, which I know they will be in terms of this decision, they'll make, it, they'll make the right decision season with the extra practices how beneficial is it for the young guys in the room the guys who haven't played a lot Dante Anderson's Aaron Hester those types I mean bowl practice is super critical for that for the young guys it's really critical for everybody I mean you look at these last two days it's all been a fundamental focus with a end of practice focus on those young players every one of those reps would not have been gained otherwise you know so there's a lot of teams across the country that are doing their exit meetings right now and and uh, they don't have the opportunity to go out and practice, and, and we have that opportunity. Um, so it makes our team better. And really the reality of how college football works, there won't be a huge transition until we're into next offseason. I mean, that's going to be here, like, before you know it. So there won't be that lag that sometimes happens when you don't have the, those bowl practice opportunities. What are your exit meetings with your guys like? What are you trying to convey to them in that setting? really straightforward and honest in terms of um, 
and it really it encompasses all aspects. You know, it's academically, socially, football, um, where where we are, and then where we need to go. You know, so I'll give my observation of, of things that have gone well, things that may have not, um, things that are happening well, you know, off the field, things maybe that aren't, and then what needs to happen to get to where we ultimately want to go. It's a very honest conversation. Um, you know, and, and most most guys are pretty self-aware, uh, so they know the things too that they need to work on and, and get better at. And then I always open it back up the other way. You know, what are things that you feel like could could be better? Um, you know, on your end, and then also what are things that I could do better? You know, because I the feedback is is feedback. So if there's some things that that players feel like from a coaching standpoint you could do better, I'm always interested in hearing what they have to say from that standpoint, because you know you're always looking for a way to get better, whether you're a player or a coach. So it's not really a one-sided conversation. It's really a, a two-sided deal. When did Ryan tweak something on the 46 yarder, or was it coming no, into? No. So it's a great story, and I I told it. Uh, to one of the, the video production that's going to come out later. But, um, you know, on the opening, not the opening kickoff, but the our first kickoff that, that they brought out a little bit, he was in on the tackle. And I knew he had kind of tweaked his, his uh, hip point, he had a hip point or tweaked his hip a little bit, uh, but he was still kind of adrenaline rush, still felt good. At halftime, he had to go in and get some treatment and worked on there. And, uh, you know, when we came out for the second half, was really the first time I was told that he can't handle the kickoffs. So it was kind of like, all right, Mac, here we go. Um, so Mac hopped in there for that. Ryan's max distance that he had hit at halftime in terms of field goals was 40, 45 yards. He said, I, I hit one from 45, but that's about all I got. So when we lined up to, to when we were in that position to kick a field goal there in the third quarter, um, the initial decision was to go to go for it. Uh, the only thing that changed that was the fact that there was an instant replay review on the interception on the sideline, whether they were inbounds or not. So it gave us two or three minutes to kind of regather. And in the, in the meantime, Ryan came over and said, I think I can do it. And it was definitely what, with the right decision in terms of strategically, uh, fourth and 11 or whatever it was isn't, isn't what you want in that situation. Um, and to me, that was a huge play in the game uh, because – you know, we had driven the ball and, and and we were down three and to be able to tie it up. And that to me, that was the catalyst for us going on a little bit of a run there. And for him, for a guy that, that has had struggles for the year that have been well documented, for him to step up in that moment and want the opportunity, I think says a lot about who he who he is, because he had already missed one. He was hurt and he thought he was outside of the range in which he could make it. And no one knew he was hurt. So it would have been easy for some people to say, you know what, why don't you just go for it and not put me in that position. But he wanted it and he stepped up in the moment and nailed it. And uh, I have a lot of respect for that because um, that, takes a, that takes a mindset of, of competitive excellence to go out there and want to do that. And he did it. Getting a chance to reflect on the regular season and just seeing the improvement and the consistency from the special teams units. Can you talk about how they played compared to the last couple of years? Well, you know, I think there's a lot of things that go into the improvement and consistency on the units. Uh, one is I think there was a, you know, and there always is, but I thought that there was a really great investment and buy-in uh, from the guys throughout the course of the offseason. Um, the little bit of change of structure and how we're allowed to practice uh, through the course of, of spring and into the summer I think helped um, because I th felt like we were further ahead than we've ever been uh, going into the, to a year. Uh, I think having some veteran guys w was certainly part of it. And then, you know, on those special teams units, staying healthy. You know, one of the things that, that, that had happened in the prior couple years, uh, whether it was the COVID year in 2020, and then it, it happened, just cropped up in 2021, was there was a lot of guys changing positions within the year on the special teams units. Things that go unnoticed, but where they line up on kickoff or where they line up on kickoff return. And, you know, we were, we were a little bit, I would say lucky, I guess, in some regards that we were able to consistently keep the same guys in the same spots over the course of 12 games. And I think that consistency, um, I think just the comfortability that they had um, allowed us to play fast and, and, and play with confidence and, and uh, continue to grow with those units throughout the course of the year. Coach Fuller mentioned you guys have kept some guys to where they've only played in three games, so they might be able to play in the bowl game. Like how important will that be for those young guys to 
get a chance to play in a bowl game. Yeah, you know, I, I think if we have the opportunity with some of those guys, I think it'd be great. Um, you know, we, we were very aware and, and conscious of, um, you know, utilizing guys' career clocks well um, and not wasting wasting years uh, for guys who aren't significant contributors. And there are some young guys that could have an opportunity. To, <coughs> excuse me, like a, uh, a Daniel Lyons and Omar Graham, um, you know, those two are the ones that kind of pop to mind immediately on the defensive side. But, um, you know, I think I think if the opportunity presents itself, I think it would be great to get those guys some experience.